In this question, we're going to look at radiocarbon dating. So here's a sketch of an old wooden box, and we'd like to know how old it is. So imagine this box was found in some archaeological site, or maybe it was just found in somebody's basement. No idea. No one has any idea where it came from. Is there some way to figure out how old it is? So we're going to use the principle of radiocarbon dating. So the information we're given in this question says that just 6% of the carbon-14 that modern trees contain is present in the wood from which this box is made. So if you don't remember, carbon-14 is produced in the upper atmosphere by nitrogen molecules which are hit by cosmic ray particles which turn them into a new element, the element carbon-14, which is an unstable isotope. And then carbon-14 is in the air, it becomes part of um, carbon dioxide in the air, it gets picked up by trees and plants, the plants turn it into carbohydrates and it gets locked into wood. The carbon-14 in modern day atmosphere is present at a level of about one part per billion. So for every billion carbon atoms that there are in our atmosphere, about one of them is a carbon-14 atom. And so that ratio gets locked up inside the tree when the tree is dead and chopped down. And then as time goes on, carbon-14 atoms gradually decay away and the regular carbon atoms remain. And so when it says here that just 6% of the carbon-14 that modern trees contain, this means that scientists somehow took a sample of this wood, analyzed the carbon, and found that there was far less carbon-14 compared to carbon than there should be if it was new, and so we could figure out how old it is. Okay, so we're going to use the principle of the uh, exponential decay law. which can be written one of two ways. So we'll first look at it um, this way. The exponential decay law says that the number of atoms remaining after a certain amount of time t is equal to the number of atoms that were originally present multiplied by e, which is the Euler's constant or the exponential constant, to the power of minus p t. Now what is p? p is the decay probability. or those specific atoms, t is the time elapsed original number of atoms. It also works for the original activity rate. Number of atoms remaining. So let's see if we can solve the problem. Do we know the decay constant for carbon-14? Okay, so that's what we need to know. So, for carbon-14, the decay constant, P, is very small, or at least it sounds very small when you write it down. It's 3.94 times 10 to the minus 12 per second. So what this means is that if you had one carbon-14 atom sitting on this table, here it is, our imaginary carbon-14 atom, that the probability that it would decay in the next second is about 3.94 times 10 to the minus 12. So it's very, very unlikely that this atom will decay. This, on the other hand, means that carbon-14 has a long half-life, so it sticks around a long time, which makes it useful for this kind of dating method. So let's try and solve the problem. So we'll take the equation from up here and try and rearrange it to make t the subject of the formula. So let's just first bring the n over n naught over to the left. That gives us n over n naught, the ratio of the amount of atoms left to the original number. And this is going to be our 6%. This is the ratio remaining. E to the minus pt. Let's get rid of that atom from up there for now. Now we can take logs of both sides. So this is E, the exponential function. So we're going to take the natural log, ln, n over n0, equals minus pt, and then we can rearrange a bit more, so we've got 1 over p equals t. We can put it the other way around if you prefer, and then we can put in the numbers. So what is p? Let's put it in. 3.94 times 10 to the minus 12, remember that's in per second, times the log of 6%, 0.06, that's where the 6% came from, and then if you put this into your calculator, you'll end up with 
608 or thereabout. Yes, 